H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. Yeah, it's recording now. Thanks for watching. Where are my images? Mm. Web services. Double scale events interaction. The only only thing that we are supposed to know is how the elements are communicated. With respect to the WSTL file. Once after we are aware of how the communication happens between the elements, like how the service and the port will be related to the binding and then to port type and operation, how it will be going to contain the input and output operation, and in cases like fault operation, wherein we want to send some error messages. So, operation can contain different types of messages. And at the same time, messages can contain different data types. So, whenever we are going to write the Java class, you should get a picture in your mind related to the WSTL first. So, once after you have designed your WSTL, or if you are going for a top-down approach, once you have created your service, once you have created your service, let us say this method, this addition method, throws some exception. So let us say someone is sending the data in terms of uh, string values. For the purpose, I have created one more web service. See, this operation I just created with add, which accepts two strings instead of integers. So once after receiving the data, I'm just converting it to an integer, and after that, I'm adding those two numbers. And finally, I'm returning the data also as a string. So I'm just giving the flexibility to the user or to the client, not only accessing only integers, here it can accept floating points, double values, and it can also accept booleans, characters, and normal string values. But as a client, when he is expecting only the addition of two numbers or two floating point numbers, he was not supposed to send the data in terms of a character because when you are performing the addition operation you can perform the addition operation only between numeric data types of course you can perform the new the concatenation operation between two strings but uh, we are not bothered about that right now so whenever you are converting integer dot parse in and if you pass as a string then it will be definitely going to fail with number format exception so in that case you can specify, you can write it as throws some kind of exception or you can handle that exception and you can respond back to the client. But remember, the communication between client and server will be going to happen only based on SOAP protocol. So whenever you have sent a request, the normal request also, it will be going to wrap up by your SOAP. That's what we have seen yesterday. And during the request or response at any phase. So even, even for the response which contains an error information, let us say user has some user has sent some string some string representation and our integer dot percent method method has thrown a number format exception. So at this point of time your SOAP will be going to construct it with a fault message. The fault will also be part of the body. Previously, body contains your actual response information, but this time your body contains. Sorry, this time your body contains fault information, and the client was supposed to handle that particular error, and he needs to he needs to get or he needs to retrieve the error message and the error code. 
So whenever an exception has occurred, there is our diagram. So see, whenever an error has occurred, instead of you sending the actual response inside the body, you just respond with a fault. The fault block will be going to contain a fault code or fault string or detail. The fault code is nothing but your error code which you and your client has decided. So based on that error code, client can understand like this is a client error or this is a server error or there is an issue with respect to the header. So based on the fault code, the client can easily understand the issue and he can fix it and he'll be going to trigger the request one more time. The fault string, it will be going to contain some extra information like by looking at the normal message instead of error code, if you can take a look at the error message also, you will be able to understand in more detail. So today we'll be going to see how to generate a fault message with respect to the server and in the same way, how to handle the fault response or the SOAP fault response with respect to the client. And once after that, we'll take a look at one real world example we'll just take a example from we'll take an example from some UDDA registries Sigda, just like Sigda so here we'll take a look at some temperature conversions which will be going to convert from Celsius to foreign heat or else let us go for this one first and we'll start with the fault later see what I have done is uh, I just went to this website yesterday I have suggested right webservices.sigda.com it's like a UDDA registry and currently we want to do a small example. So we have searched for temperature or else I will start from the scratch. So in the text box, in the search box, I searched for temperature. It has listed with all the available services with respect to our temperature. And uh, I have selected this one, temperature conversion. So this is the WSTL which was available. Remember, your WSTL contains the endpoint information as well as how the request and response communication should happen and also the transport protocol. So once after that, just take the WSTL file. Take the WSTL file. And place it in some location. If my voice was not clear, just let me know. I will join using normal audio conference. So this is a WSTL just to store it at uh, some location. Just dot WSTL file. Now create a small project when we just want to make use of the WSTL and create a client by using Apache CXS. Dynamic web project. Convert temperature client. So once after that, uh, we just need to import the WSTL file at some location. So currently I'll just drag and drop. Where is our 
temperature dot WSTL file. What is the error? Instruction target matching XML is not allowed. Yeah, we can place it anywhere. We have the option, uh, the CXF has the option of generating the client at any place. So, yeah, no, there is no error. Just right click on the WSTL file. See, this time what we are doing, we are not at all using our local server. I didn't do anything. It was fixed automatically. See, current, yesterday what we have tried, we have created a additions or arithmetic service. That means we have provided a service. We have written a service and after that we have written one client as well. So, we in the sense, the service was deployed onto our local host only. And your client also accessing from the same location and that's why we didn't go for UDDI because you didn't re register your service at the UDDI layer. We don't want any of other clients to come and take a look at our arithmetic operation service. But today we just want to make we just we want to work as a client and we want to use the existing services because we don't want to write the convert temperature code again and the service was already available at the UDDL layer and you have verified the UDDL layer and you just downloaded the WSTL file. So your WSTL file is enough to generate the client code and to identify the endpoint address. Your Apache CXF has the capability of generating the JAXP objects and the required JAXWS classes based on WSTL file. So yesterday we have seen the top down approach or from Java to WSTL conversion. So there they have used a tool called Java 2 WSTL. Today we'll be going to discuss in deep one by one. The Java 2 WSTL tool is used to convert your Java application to actual web service. Of course, it will be going to generate a WSTL as well. And in the reverse way, the WSTL to Java. So this was also available with respect to your Apache CXF. So if you just provide the WSTL file, your Apache CXF will be going to generate the JAXP classes and the required JAXWS classes. The JAXWS classes nothing but your service or your port and the implementation class and, uh, and also it will be going to generate a client or server code if you need. So let us go and verify your Apache CXF folder first. Did anyone verify what are all the folders or files? available in Apache CXF. Go to lib. Your lib contains all the required jar files and you can see that JAXP API, JAXP IMPL,
WSTL related stuff, XML beans, which is used for converting your uh, WSTL file into JAXP code, you need the XML beans. Anyway, JAR files are mandatory. And here you can see that lot of bad files, nothing but your Windows batch file. So here you can see that WSTL to Java. So your WSTL to Java, your WSTL to Java, which will be going to convert your WSTL, the web service description language, into Java objects. And in the same way, Java to WS. So these two commands are used by your Apache CXF and if you take a look at during the object generation, here it will be going to use that particular command and will be going to generate all the required class files. Currently we are making use of the external WSTL file. Just right click on the WSTL file and go to web services and we want only client generate client you can see that test with web service explorer which means first, at the first time we have verified one web service explorer window so that that is that is the same and the next one is generate java bean skeleton so just like your server core and after that generate client so currently we are interested only in generate client so here you have the option of selecting the project whether you want to select at the same location or you want to place at different location. So currently I want to place at our project is convert temp client. And in the same way server runtime is same and web services runtime it is Apache CXF 2.x. You can see that it has selected the WSL file already. If it wasn't you need to find out because anyway we right click on the WSL file so it will be going to populate automatically. Click on next. Package name, it has suggested one package name, leave it as it is, click on next. And here it will be going to show you all these differences. See these options how it has retrieved these are available with respect to your preferences Apache CXF configuration. If you want some extra, you can just go to that. See those options, you just need to verify Sandeep. Click on finish. Here you can see that it has used the command java to ws and all the required command line options like what is the class path that it was supposed to use and what is the directory that it was supposed to generate the required class files the wstl file Creating service, loading front-end JAX-WS, loading data binding JAX-B. So front-end JAX-WS, data binding means all your data types will be going to convert it into the jax classes. And finally, it will be going to generate the WSTL to Java conversion. So go and verify your class file, your project now. So here you can see that it has created the package and after that it has loaded all the class files. The issue with uh, the issue while converting the WSTL to Java, what it has done is it hasn't created a separate package for your JAXP. If you want you can just place create a separate package and place all the JAXP related files.
Meanwhile, just want to verify what are all the elements that are available with respect to your WSTL. Open your WSTL. See the left side tree structure. So your messages, it consists of Celsius to foreign heat soap request, response, foreign heat to Celsius, and in the same way, wind chill in Celsius soap request and wind chill in foreign heat soap request and response. So it consists of four operations and the four of each operation consists of a request and response input message. And it has one SOAP address consists of a port name which was binded to temperature conversion SOAP binding. Go back to the top. So each operation, go back to the top. Each operation consists of the input message and the output message. So these are the input messages and output messages. One, two, three, four operations. So each operation consists of input and output. And finally, your data types. So your data types, it was referring like Celsius to foreign heat consists of the decimal value for Celsius. And the response, response also consists of a decimal value and the value like uh, whenever it has converted, whenever it has converted from Celsius to foreign heat, it will be going to respond with a decimal value. So each and everything, for each and every complex element, it will be going to generate a separate JAXP file. Now go and verify your JAXP files that were generated. Celsius to foreign heat consists of only one element which consists of getter value, setter value. So in the same way for all the remaining JAXP classes. Now come back to our actual class files. So for client, even for client or for server, it will be going to generate a service and after that it will be going to generate a dummy implementation for client. Even though if it was not required, your Apache CXF will be going to generate. Let us start with the one by one class and we'll take a look at the annotations. See, your front end is nothing but your JAXWS. So your JAXWS, which will be going to contain all the annotations for your web service. These annotations are available from a package called JavaX.XML.WS package. So this package contains all the required annotations. So like at the rate web service, which specifies that the, that the interface is exposed as a service. And this web service will be going to specify it at both the service endpoint level and in the same way the service implementation level. But when it was specified at the service implementation level, we are supposed to specify a parameter called endpoint interface, which will be going to refer to your actual SEI, service endpoint interface. Open your WSTL. Let us go one by one Java classes that got created. 
the first one is <coughs> i'm sorry temperature conversion soap type your temperature conversion soap type let us go and verify in your wscl file having so many spaces your port type it will be going to contain from the port type which will be going to contain about your operations so your operations will be going to specified in your port type so that will be going to specified as you were as you were service your web service which will be going to contain the name here it was specified as temperature conversion soap type and it will be going to contain a target namespace so the target namespace it was retrieved from your digital file if you go and look at the top it will be going to contain that one see all these classes are generated only based on your wsql file and once after that it will be going to contain all the methods or corresponding operations in your wscl file and it will be going to specify all the annotations like the first one is at the rate web method web method is nothing but your operation from the port type go down take one by one your operation or let us let me copy this one your operation name will be your java method name and once after that i didn't copy it properly sorry your operation your operation name will be your java method name you can see that your method web method consists of a parameter called operation name which will be going to point to the same name and once after that your web result is nothing but the response that you want to return back to the client so currently our response actual type is celsius to foreign heat result if you go and verify the message it will be going to contain the same and your target namespace again it will be going to point to the same because we don't have different xsts and we are referring to only one double stl or one xst file and the request wrapper is nothing but the actual elements the actual elements for your request object and in the same way the response wrapper which will be going to specify actual message for your response object and here it consists of an additional attribute class name which will be going to point to your actual request object in terms of jaxp these request and response these are optional if you didn't specify that's also uh, there won't be any issue with that and finally for each and every method it will be going to contain certain parameters so at the rate web param will be going to specify will be used to specify the parameter for your operation so the name of the param is n celsius in the same way all the remaining methods currently in our in our wscl5 we have four operations so there are four methods corresponding to each and every operation available in your port type class so this is the main interface that will be going to used by the client now see this part we just discussed only about the port type part we just discussed only about this particular port type part and now we need to discuss about the binding part i'm sorry the service part go to your next class temperature conversions 
your temperature here the temperature conversions will be going to extend one interface which is javax.xml.ws.service which specifies that this is a web service client so here they have used an annotation called web service client H2K Infosys provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com.